So let's talk about the first part. This um, five part system, these are the main things that I've seen over and over again in healing that come up with blocks and the way that things work. And the first is the question, what is the body? So it's this little guy in the center. What is the body really? Um, because when we understand the different parts of the body, we can understand life and healing and how the mind-body connection works. Because otherwise we're sort of either, we're over here, we're at the whim of our emotions or our experiences, which are true and important for us, but can fall short of helping us to actually figure out what's going on. And then we can get stuck over here, which is a little bit too dogmatic of not really relating to our experience. So when people get stuck over here, they can get a little too, this is like the, where the new age sort of thinking falls short. It's all good, I feel it, so it's true which can really not serve us in some ways. And if you're getting stuck over here, and this is my particular shadow side that I've worked through in life is like, it says it's like this, this is how it is. The sort of like spiritual bypass type of a side. And so we really wanna balance those two. So when we think about what is the body, one of the frameworks that I like to use is the traditional Vedic, so coming from India, understanding of the body. And that's the third page in your handout. It's the one with all of those little circles. So when we ask the question, and you'll see that each of, each of these points starts with a question. When we ask the person the question, what is the body? This is a good, broad answer. So I didn't make this up. These are called the koshas or the sheaths or the layers of the human being, but I think it's very helpful um, to really give you a framework of ancient understanding of who and what you are. So this uh, diagram are all of the layers of what actually make up a human being. And the first layer, the first circle, is the physical body. These all have Sanskrit names, We're gonna, I'm going to explain them in the more easy to learn term. So the first, the outermost circle, so this is the one that you see the most, is the physical body or the physical layer. Literally in Sanskrit it's kind of like the food body. This is the part of your anatomy and existence that is fed by the physical world. We take in nutrients, it makes this physical body, that's what you see. But you'll notice that there's actually a whole lot more and each of those have definitions. So the second one is the prana layer. P-R-A-N-A -A is the uh, term from Indian spiritual science and health for chi or your vital essence. So this is where we start to get more into places where acupuncture kind of connect and I would say that the fascia sort of bridges these two. And the layers of the body are all interconnected. So you can't really separate them out, but we do to talk about them differently. So the physical body, the prana body. The next one is the mind layer. And just like the Eskimos had a lot of words for snow, Sanskrit has a lot of words for different parts of the mind. So if you really want to understand how does the mind work physically, these traditions give us a lot. So mind in this aspect is it's the thinking mind, but it's also our reactionary tendencies. So thinking mind is our habits, our sort of base level gut reaction. I think it should be this way, a little more what some traditions call kind of like the ego type of thinking. This is my, your eye sense kind of lives in here. And this is important because we're going to uh, contradict that or differentiate rather that with the next layer, which is the, the intellect um, or sort of like the discrimination layer. It's hard, um, ancient terms have a lot of different ones. It's hard to find the one that's exact, but it's like higher thinking. So intellect, discrimination, what is true with a capital T versus what is subjective. And you'll notice that at the center is really whatever we call the mystery of life. Love with a capital L, God, the universe, consciousness itself is at the center in this worldview of your existence. Some people talk about the soul, that's kind of in, in that aspect. And so you'll notice that as we get closer inward to that, we're getting closer to that source. So that's why we go from mind to intellect. And the last one, I would call it the spiritual body. Sometimes it's called the bliss body. I don't, my um, spiritual teacher who was, was a 
80 year old Indian Swami. He's like, ah, bad translation. I don't like bliss. Ananda, it's the Ananda Kosha, so the Ananda layer. And Ananda usually gets translated as bliss. Um, and his argument was like, mm, that's not a good translation. Technically, Ananda is um, like without the absence of the mind, the absence of that thinking mind. So however we term it, I like to say the, the spiritual body, I think kind of makes sense but that gets much closer. So the term that I'll use a lot, which I want to define for you, is you'll see these little cross over here of like the subtle body. The subtle body is not a well-determined uh, definition, but just to say that it means, it touches in a little bit to the physical body, but it's really kind of, it's a combination of your chi, your prana layer, your mind, and a little bit of the deeper mind. So it doesn't quite touch on the deeper, deeper stuff. Um, but it's also not wholly the physical body. So often I'll talk about the subtle body just to mean the, the whole of the energetic process. And this is important because a lot of places where I see people get stuck is that when something happens to us, maybe it's uh, something someone said or something as a child, or it could be a full on trauma or just a little kink of something that you had a reaction to. It's like the subtle body gets a little kink in it. It leaves a memory or a mark that can get stuck there. And when things are out of whack in the subtle body part of our being, this is where we get stuck. We get unconscious tendencies, we get reactions, sometimes we get physical pain. And the problem is that if it's stuck in this subtle body layer and we only approach it from the thinking mind with traditional therapy, now a lot of somatic therapy really includes more of the body, which is more helpful. But it is a bit of a truism with healing that whatever layer it's in is the layer that needs to be activated to get it out. So acupuncture is helpful here. I use a lot of um, tapping or EFT or different aspects where you're tapping on acupuncture points, engaging the mind. When you engage these layers all at the same time in certain ways, it can really reset the system and let things that have been stuck for a very long time, often people's whole lives, to get out. So this is why I want you to understand the layers of the human being. And this is why we start here in the body wisdom method, because we have to have an idea of how these things are working together. Mm -hmm.